you. I get you a thousand percent. And I, I respect that more than you know. I think that's fantastic. She's okay. Awesome. I already okay. have so many questions for you, but I need to be patient. So. <laughs> Storyteller, and it's easier because I can go on forever, and it's not tech talk because it's only. Oh, we're live! Oh my gosh, we're live, you guys! Hey, good night. Hey, good night. We are. I just That's noticed that. Yeah. This is how we enter. We're like, boom. We are live and rocking. <laughs> Hey, I want to welcome you guys to Talk O Tuesday. My name is Linda West. I'm the host of your show. And here we have Anita and Mary, the co-host. And we have a special guest today, <sighs> Dr. Erica Miller. Now, she's a Holocaust survivor, but it's not about surviving. It's about thriving. So today on today's show, we're going to learn about her story. And she's going to tell us how we can thrive at, guess what, 85. What? Woohoo. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. I love, it, I love it. I love it. Periodically, I'm going to look at my phone. It's not because I'm ignoring you guys, just because I want to make sure we're on track here. So I want to share with you guys that Taco Tuesday is the talk show that provides fun, positive, and uplifting content every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time. You'll follow us at Living on Facebook. And then I want to thank our sponsors today. We have Living Live Media and the Live Video Hub. Mary, it's all you, girl. Hey, it is Tuesday. First, tell us why you're, in the, why you're in your car. Okay, well, it's 2 o'clock on Tuesday. I am up near the northern part of Illinois in Wisconsin in the middle of an ice storm. So it is slow, trudgery growing. As long as I wanted to be in front of someplace, it didn't work. So I'm in the car. I'm covered with ice and snow, but I'm here. <laughs> and that oh, doesn't bother her anyway. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And with you that, know, I, I, I have a tendency to interrupt, and I'm an elder, so I take liberties. <laughs> when, you said, when you said girl, I love being a girl forever. We girls can be girls young, and girls when we're 85 or 90. Uh, guys cannot say they're boys, right? And men are people too. Cut. Okay, go ahead. Men are people. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, if you're a man, a woman, a girl, a boy, or a child, whoever you are, hashtag live below. If you are on the replay, hey, hashtag replay. And guess what? I'm telling you where I'm at. I'm up near Wisconsin and Illinois border. Tell us where you're at. Tell us where you're hailing from. And um, right back to you guys. Let's hear what's going on, everyone else. Go ahead. Back at you, Anita. Well, I'm Anita Myers, and um, Mary, I, I am, I'm praying for you through the ice storm. <laughs> and Miss Erica Miller, it's very nice to be meeting you. I look forward to asking you 15,000 questions probably on the I show. Like and it, I like it. <laughs> I, know, it on. Um, I, I wondered i you know i wanted to tell everyone that's watching that you know we really have an awesome show planned for all of you considering who we have as our guest and you know i wanted to ask a, the first question out there for those of you who are just joining in and you see that we've got the three of us i want you to start thinking about a, a time in your life where you've kind of gotten stuck where um you've survived from a close call uh, maybe you were in a tight spot. Uh, maybe even something as frustrating as a traffic jam. How you get out of those things? It's so frustrating. You see people have road rage and all sorts of things. But you know, how have you survived through those things? Think about those types of things, and then just imagine something so much bigger than that. When you have a guest like Erica Miller, who has survived and thrived through the Holocaust completely different story, completely different experience. We're, we live our day-to-day -day lives and we get frustrated over the things we get frustrated over. I'm hoping that when you are watching today, whether it's live or in the replay, that you take the nuggets of wisdom that's gonna come from our guest who can probably show you a much better way to get through your day considering what she's been through and how she is today. Um, I heard that it's estimated that more than 16 million people were killed during the Holocaust, is that correct? Uh, take or leave a few, it really doesn't matter a lot. And it's like they, uh, they think that they need to live because you're a certain ethnicity or something, and it still goes on. It's mind boggling. They're civilized people, and the Germans, they were doctor and professor, really educated. So if it can happen then, it can, it's still happening, and we have to be vigilant. 
because never again is not just a slogan. They have to be involved. They have to name what it is, uh, you know. So we have we have an ob obligation, and those like me, and my voice is very important. So I landed because when you said the frustration on the freeway, this and that. I was a very hard parent to have because unless you're dying, you go to school. Everything is not <laughs> a big deal, you know? So again, it was very tough because I don't have empathy for that even now. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Again, unless you're dying, unless there's cancer, it's like we are resilient. We are alive. We're not dinosaurs. So when you're stuck in the traffic or something, okay, fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. One talks to oneself because yep. all the striving, all the big drama, and then we die. And guess what? We need to be aware. And my, my zest for life, I'm just lucky to be alive, is because I know I'm, going to, I'm a dead person walking, and I'm not morbid at all. My, I'm a control freak. I'm in charge of my life but i surrender to destiny and look at me i'm all alive ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta. <laughs> tomorrow i could be a corpse okay i love what you <laughs> said you said she said something that was so special just now yeah. like everything you said was wonderful. but she said yeah, yeah. she said but, i surrender to destiny you surrender to destiny and i think that that's such a strong wise, powerful thing to do, to finally just surrender to it. And you're right, you know, most of us, we're holding on. These are our fight or flight experiences, which are, you know, I think a lot of folks tend to magnify these little Drama. situations because they don't understand. Yeah. Yep. I have to agree with you what guys. You I like, I tell people all the time, if I don't get there on time, what's going to happen? Nothing. We just start late. Not a big deal. If, if I, if I have if I have to miss a meeting, what's going to happen? The world won't end. It's right. Just let that go. I'm I'm so glad you even brought that up because it's it's so small compared to everything else. Okay, and remember, and you know it. The the little brain, not so little. Mine is maybe bigger, but Einstein's <laughs> brain was little, at three and a half pounds or something. The purpose of the brain is fight or flight. Okay, uh, take care of yourself so you not you don't end up a dinosaur or, or or a bear is going to eat you. So my point is all that worry. What if? What if? What if? All that energy spent on what if? Guess what? Again, you or you control, you predict, you prepare yourself just like me. I never prepare, but I'm authentic. I don't know how to spell the word. Authentic. I got here early, by the way. So oh, that was because her publicist got her here early. Yeah, <laughs> boy, I, li I like that part. But it's like again. We are speaking about just navigating. It's just being there and just having the joy of life because, again, they're not here forever and everything mm -hmm. is not a big deal. And coming from where I come from, I am such so victorious and it's a mindset. The cup is half full, not empty. And I'm not in La La Land, meaning we, we worry about things that never, we don't want it to happen. But guess what? We are very resilient. When things happen, okay, what do we do? Fight or flight, remember? So all that energy we spend on boring, we should plan, we should be on time whenever possible. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> but it can be controlled. But then we have to surrender something higher, something that happens. Uh, and there's all kind, of, all kind of discussions. Is there free will? Or is it all destiny? Like we are robots, we are programmed. Mm. And they have studies of little kids. They can predict on their electrodes, whatever, that what toy they're going to pick. I refuse to believe there is no free will. But guess what? You do your part and then you never know what happens in the, what's around the bushes. Some good, some not too good, but we have to embrace all of it because it's exciting. So I went to this Kabbalah, I don't know, philosophy, Jewish, whatever, in this little rabbi in our community, a really boring poor thing. And I gave him a hard time because he said the day will come <laughs> when the Messiah will be coming to Jerusalem and then there will be peace. Everybody will love, will be so serene. I said, Rabbi, it's going to be so boring. Can you imagine? No tension, no nothing, just sitting there. We have to be kind of challenged. We have to, okay, cut. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah, I, okay. So I want to say that the theme that I really that. loved, like, I love what you said about, um, empathy you know because just recently i declared that i i am no longer empathic <laughs> you know i don't know if it's real or not but i declare that because because it's not so much that i don't want to be empathic it's just that i want to make sure that i don't take on the negative energy of other people 
Mm. Okay, what do you think about that? No, no, you will never not be empathic. Either you got it or you don't. That's it's what about, somebody told me. I'm like, no, 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 no. But okay. it's about seven limits. Okay, okay. Seven okay. limits. It's really hard. It's the way you're developed because if you, you know, there's people who have to work really hard to um, have the compassion for someone else or to understand where someone's coming from and others they get it so quickly that they could cry about it. It's just, I think we're all wired in our own special way that when I hear, I hear Dr. Erica say, you either got it or you don't. And you know what? I want to tell you every time Dr. I get Erica I got says, it. Stop <laughs> setting limits. It's the hardest thing. It's like selfish is good. Self is the care of self. Did you hear that, ladies? Selfish is good. <laughs> Others, are you kidding me? It's not neglect. I always knew it. Mm. Somebody up there likes me. Huh? Maybe they, they liked. I don't know. But again, <laughs> self, because I see victim. Oh, I do. Nobody pleases me. Do, do, do. Hey, who does it for you? I mean, again, we are speaking about setting limit. It's a cultural thing. To be nice is wonderful. And once you have empathy, you always have empathy. Or you're like, I'm not going to name names. Some people, they don't get it. They don't got it. But we know, we know who you're thinking about. <laughs> okay. No, no. No, no. Okay. I'm just right, right. I know. I know. But setting mm. limits is very hard. And I was absolutely very clear. Mm. My kids had to do their own laundry. As soon as they could reach the washing machine, they had to do their own lunches, whatever. If not, they would go without. Sometimes they forgot the food at home they, i said go starve or go back from your plant i i you know the best thing that parents can do is giving them a, opportunity to be self-reliant yes oh, yeah exactly. yep you got it you got standing so ovation did, for that one <laughs> yeah why can't you be like like mary's mother used to say go get adopted but again <laughs> they, they they grew up really self-sufficient but my son when he got married his wife said why do you need me you cook better than me you do longer everything he says hey you know what everybody needs a wife i mean i taught them because i needed help and i knew it before my time and i'm 85 now look at me Just one sexy mama so <laughs> right, and I I have a question yeah. for you, um, Dr. Erica. You have 15 million questions. Make them quick. I know. This is like number two. <laughs> We've got a long what? way to go. Um, my question for you is, is, you know, you sound, you have so much energy and I, I love it. It's so contagious. What inspires you when there are things that seem, you know, depressing or upsetting? I know it's going to probably take a long time with your threshold, but what does inspire you? Uh, you know, very simple. You, you might not believe me. And I'm sorry. I, I'm alive. Life doesn't owe me everything. It's okay. I'm not dying. To me, I, I put down everything that life is a challenge. I embrace it all. You never know. It's exciting. And it's temporarily. If there is no hope, go kill yourself. And some people do. I don't mean you, you. I'm <laughs> saying that again, if there's no hope, it's tough. But there are situations. Things just happen. So I am very, very lucky because I'm told that I'm in denial. I'm very detached, mm. perhaps, but I'm taking good care of myself. I just, nothing is a big drama. The worst thing is when you die. And she likes what I'm talking yeah. about. So again, that's what yeah. I like. To <laughs> Did I answer you? Yes, and you know, I love the, those of you who want to put a hashtag on something that actually is quite profound. She said something very simple, but it's profound. I'm alive. When you're alive, you're feeling Give perfect. Give life. I have hearts. Give us hearts. Forget about life. Give us life. You know what? <laughs> Give us some hearts on that. You know, you guys. And life doesn't yeah. owe us anything. We don't get everything. Yeah. There is a choice now. Zero population. They don't want any kids. Some don't want to get married. Some want to change to transgender. Who cares? Whatever it is, give me life, and we are particular and very universal. I am. I'm very unique, but I'm universal meaning. I'm a citizen of the world. I've been in 89 countries so far. Uh, again, I'm not bragging, I just share. And again, I feel the same like you feel when I cut, we all bleed. We all need the same. We need a hug. And old people have sex too if they have somebody to do it with. Okay? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> yeah, one more time. One more time for those of you who do not hear what she said. Say it one more time. <laughs> 
you flower. never give up. You should be open. Those of us that don't have it, we will be open forever because we need hug, we need touch. All the animals, they come close to each other. Little kids, old people in the retirement places. My mother-in-law, she was 96, and, and they came in, they found her on the floor. She fell down with another guy, another 90-year-old there because they were <laughs> hugging. <laughs> yeah, out of the bed. So that is never too old. Maybe you, you never cannot do it. Absolutely not. Big girls, no, big girls can fake it. Guys cannot, as you know. <laughs> so the moral of the story is to live life. Yeah. <laughs> Just live it. Oh, but my gosh. She's so amazing. I love this. Yeah, I we're going to have to have a five-hour show, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Hey, you guys, if you're enjoying this, please hit that share button. Share this out. You ladies here, please share it out. We got our mastermind people watching. Listen. Oh, my gosh. Do I talk too much too fast? No. no. Give me more. No. Before we head out, I do want to make sure that we share your books because I know, um, I think, oh, here's the books right here. You can bring them on. Just want to share with you guys some of the books that she's It's on written. Amazon. Which is your favorite? Uh all of the above. So I knew sorry. you were going to say that. <laughs> Why did I know that? No, no, Why did I, I, I need that one. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. because this one, okay, because this one, it's really my life story. Okay. And the interesting part is that I, the interesting part is that I had, I really wanted to know what my kids, what my husband thought about me. I was a hard person to live with. So I had them interviewed and I promised them that I will not edit out either. So my mm. take for my son, for my daughter, for my husband, for my whatever, and it was brutal. I knew my daughter hated me, okay? Because I was competition <laughs> with her daddy. But my son, I thought he was the love of my life. But he, uh, you know, aligned to this, yeah, she's one, one hot mama. It's all about her, okay? So it's kind of very <laughs> to see intimate, you know, my life and all that kind of thing. So this is uh, from tri from trauma to triumph. But before we go on with the next one, I want to ask you a question about that. because you, I wrote my book. It's called The Year of Fears. And I have a story in there from my previous marriage, not good stuff, you know. And when I, when I was writing it, I was like, I was having these emotions of like, oh, gosh, if I put this out there, or th am I going to get all these negative Mm -hmm. um energies towards me and stuff so how mm -hmm. did you like when you put your, you wrote your book and then you put it out there how did that feel to put it out there you were uh, like you know f them brutal <laughs> uh my father was a little bit of a pred predator he was a, a, a it was fooling around all my mother's life and all that kind of things it was nothing nice whatever uh, i took liberties as a clinician because other people have similar situations mm -hmm. so i knew that i will get a you know a, a whatever in case in point uh, so a couple, the part of our group, I gave the book, the book signing, she came back and she handed me back the book. She says, something should be private. She was offended that I shared about my father, that I shared. About, so there is no free lunch. Life takes courage. Yeah. There you go. That's a good one. Life takes courage. Oh, yeah. show. Sure. I love and it. This takes one, courage. So don't tell me I cannot do it because it's a, based on my life story. <laughs> Don't tell me I can't do it. <laughs> and it's going to be on my grave. I already have the epitaph request on my grave. With little and mighty, don't tell me I cannot do it. Living conditions <laughs> in here and now, it won't be. The latest one, which made me best international bestseller, it's crazy, ladies. I mean, a little girl from Transylvania, Dracula was my cousin. Dracula. <laughs> my cousin, really? Uh -huh. No, I lie sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, chronologically, get the ancient gasto. A practical guide for healthy living to age 123. And watch me, girls. Somebody lived a uh, Jane something in France, 122 in 64 days. If she can live like that long, so can I. I want to be, I'm grandiose enough. I'm only short to be in the book of Guinness. Uh, uh -huh. and, and there is already somebody living, a, a, a born that can live to 150 with all the Ooh. stem cells and all that kind Whoa. of thing. But it's not just about living, about living well. Right. And this yeah. is what this is why I'm attracted to youngins like you. You want to be like me. How am I young, Erica? Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> and my son, who turned 52 or something at the big party, and I was dancing like crazy. So his friend said, Your mother is such a cougar. And Johnny says, Mother, you better <laughs> not date somebody younger than me. And I said, Watch me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. you know, she's really, uh, she's really, um, she is embracing the whole concept of carpe diem. She is just seizing mm -hmm. the day every day. That's totally, wonderful. Totally. Mary, you have any questions over uh, there? No, I'm just, I'm taking everything in. This is great. She's <laughs> awesome. 
she's going yeah so going for it. can we talk about the holocaust like, sure. yeah let's talk about that because this is that's something that like I was even alive during that time and so can you take us back to there like you were a kid you were very young when you were experiencing the Holocaust and what was it like at that time for you okay absolutely did not have a clue what's going on mm. I was seven and we were in Romania internal it was a province uh, it used to be Austria before so my mother tongue is German so here it was a family compound and I saw this I saw my mother's stern face and my father and everybody okay here come the dogs with the with the soldiers they have to go and hide in the attic i could not understand what goes on there so we were hiding and i said what's going on Shh, don't ask so many questions mm -hmm. and i guess the stress so uh it, it, trauma trauma is but you're not handicapped by it i remember being in the attic with all the straw and coming, hearing the dog barks and the Germans coming up, they were rounding up Jews. That was in, in 41. Mm -hmm. uh, they came into Romania, the Germans and all that. So here, my mother put her hand over my mouth. So I don't give away, we were hiding. And again, so I just could not breathe. And then they left and she took her hand off. So they, years I mean, let's say maybe 20 years ago, a friend of mine, she learned to be a cosmetologist. So she wanted to give me a facial. So she put that mat, that, that mud of my, over my face. And here I had the flesh on the attic and I could not breathe. I said, Sylvia, Sylvia, take it off. I knew I was here, I was safe, but that trauma, whatever. So she came, she washed it off. Uh, or when I went to my son, he was in the band. And whenever I used to hear, you know, Germ you know kind of like sirens, you know, German, whatever. I, Tears were gushing down, I mean, uncontrollable anxiety. So when he decided we are going to go to those trains where they put trains going over, we did not know. We could not bring any clothes. So I remember putting on the towel, putting on the No. I don't know, she froze or... Yeah, yeah, I don't know if they can hear us, but you know, we're all on bated breath here. I know because I want to know more because I'm in the story and I'm not leaving it until I can hear more. Oh, but there. hopefully, we're hearing something. We're getting a signal. We're getting, yeah, I'm not getting anything. We must have lost her. That was so amazing. I would love to hear more what she was trying to say. It's amazing yeah. sometimes where the memories of things, the smell, like there's one smell in my childhood that brings back a terrible memory of something. But whenever I smell it, it's like, oh, stop. Don't even go near there. It's dangerous. Don't do it. So it's so weird how smell or feeling or anxiety happens. And Those it goes like the through triggers. That. Yeah. Right. We have triggers that do it. We have um, even music, you know, certain songs I don't want to hear. Yep. The moment I hear the begin, I know it from the very first note, and it's like, yes. nope, turn it off, turn it off. I don't want to hear it exactly. because it triggers you, makes you feel um, uh, you can get anxiety or depressed, exactly. and, you know. And then you just have to go to the other direction. So I mean, I'm I I don't know how you felt when you're hearing her her energy to to know just to hear the title that she, mm -hmm. this is a survivor of the Holocaust. Just saying the right. word Holocaust, you have a million different images and you are naturally have negative connotations with something like that and then you meet her and she's completely the opposite well so and then you think how many other people are out there from any other events also that are like her that mm -hmm. are going through all this and how this one show may be able to help all those people to know that you can just live like she said just be life just live and so if you were Holocaust, if you were maybe a fire victim, maybe a hurricane victim, tornado victim, uh, a life changing victim, you know, with with government or whatever, that you can take her words and say, I'm just going to live. I, you know, I love when she was saying right. that, because that's what's so important right. is that that all, like she said, that all happened in the past. I'm living now. So that's right. so important that we remember that. And and it's just amazing how our minds work, though. Do you have a smell up oh, oh, there back, I think? Oh, not yet. Do you have? Do a I have smell? a smell? I think I smell good. No, I mean, get I out of here, shower Sally. and I. No, put no, no. A nice I mean, little... like a smell that gives you back to either a good memory or a bad memory. Yes. Do you have one of yes. those? Yes. Well, you can't just say yes. What is it? Um, I'm I'm trying to uh, I'm just thinking to myself like there's there's a couple of smells, but the one that 
it's the smell of this one cologne that uh -huh. was sprayed in. Uh, I worked in a I worked in a company. It's a men's clothing store uh -huh. for suits. Uh, it's called, uh, I don't know how it's actually pronounced, but when we were working there, it was called Back Rack. Okay. Uh, do you remember that? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it I was worked, ba I, Back Rack or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I worked in um, the Golf Mill Mall. Oh, okay. And oh, there that. was a, 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 st a store called Back Rack. So it was, I, mm -hmm. I decided to get involved in it because I, uh, when I was in college, oh. there was a, we're a back store now. in the mall. Are you back? Oh. Yes. And I'm we here to look away like crazy because I think my time is running off. Yeah, all your energy short circuited the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, spots. Your energy short circuited the whole thing. Okay, oh. so yeah, yeah. of course, when in doubt, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but share this story. So uh, one of our one of our guests here at the event asked her the story about the cattle car, you know, like when they were taking everybody away and they're, you know, so why don't you share that again? You know, and again, so we were in the cattle car. I mean, a lot of people, every time there was a station, they stopped, they pushed in some more people. And being in the corner there, we were safe from the beating that they stopped all the time. So again, I to entertain myself, this little kid with the big eyes, all right? And I saw, oh, yeah, there the little Joe, there the Joe in German. I was singing to myself. And then memory left. I know finally we got sunburns. It was raining like crazy. It was attacking the mountain. We went to Ukraine. So we were pushed out and there were pushed people there and put there. And my father, he spoke a few languages, German, Romanian, and Russian, whatever. So they took him away. I'll they took right us to the area. So I get to fly, but they, they, they despair, those people, they fear. And then they put us, we found a room of 20 people. It's like a kitchen a little bit and I was just watching everybody was like I was in Bali monkeys they're really gathering together they clean their lice what we did and everybody was with somebody in this one woman her contorted face I will never forget she was wailing all the time she obviously lost she was an old lady probably 40 or 50 so again all my life I wanted to go and touch her and my mother again hold me very close to her, not to not to go out of my zone comfort zone so it was with me and then after we came back we were in a holding camp for four years what do you Whoa. do for four years no memory I remember no faces of kids I know we played jumped over dead bodies I remember looking out the little window with a kept them in the morning coming a little stool then they had a little room there somewhere picking up the dead bodies mm. and i looked at those ugly dead people and i thought tomorrow maybe i will be dead but i don't want to die ugly i want to pose and guess what <laughs> i've been posing all my life i've implanted teeth i don't want to die like my mother without teeth mm -hmm. so i like to die pretty so you get me <laughs> To me, jumping over dead bodies to play. Somebody had to teach me because I was never in school. After four years, the Russian liberated us. They were holding camp. They didn't get us fast enough. There were lots of places, too many Jews to get over them right away. Oh. So when I came back, I went in a Catholic school. Uh, I went fifth grade, first time in school. Somebody had to teach me to read and write and math and physics. Because guess what? I look up to the school over myself, look around. Is there anybody? else that doesn't make a cross to themselves. It was a Catholic school. I was all alone. So I had issues with attachment because again, it's like I'm all alone in the world, always different, whatever. So in the first opportunity, in the stories, in the book, whatever, that I knew answers and all that, as soon as we could, we went to Israel. It was Palestine, my sister went, Exodus, a whole big story. And when we came there, the feeling of being the majority, safe, mm -hmm. in the Israelis, they were so rude, but I was safe with them. They told you how they thought. So when I dated, them, we went on a, a date with this other girl with some guy from Jerusalem. Here we sit in the truck. He takes off his shoes, has a torn sock, and he scratches himself. And I say, Moishi, aren't you embarrassed? He looks at me. It was itching. So that kind of Okay, <laughs> so that kind of thing. So I kind of went to the Israeli Air Force. I went to high school at night. I had two jobs. My, my mother was terribly worried about me. I don't know about my father, that I would never find a husband because in those days, education was not in, it's building the country. I wanted it all. My quest of learning, I just needed to be different. I didn't care. I never needed a husband. I was an old maid of 23, 24. I finished two years in the Air Force. I had crushes over those pilots like crazy. 
I'd love it. And the movie is going to be made out of it. And I kind of, I kind of a little bit, kind of exaggerate a little bit, but it's a nice love story. My first love <laughs> and, and, and then whatever. And then uh, before I, I was dating somebody, young fellow, who knows what, I don't remember anymore. Everybody expected me to get married because all my friends, in order not to go to the, to the army in Israel, a girl, you have to get married to be Orthodox. I was neither. I thought they oh, were wow. traitors. They come to need me. So here I was, 23. I had a job in the Israeli government tourist office i had nice clothes this and that and again i didn't need a man i never wanted to get married can you imagine that was about 60 years ago 70 years ago so then i said okay before i settle with yanko i'm very i'm in a hurry because i know my time is almost up okay so, <laughs> so i came and destiny had it that here i was introduced to this guy he was a widower what young man is a bidder? I was told by a psychic in Israel that my heart is in Israel. You want to live there. I was very guilty. But you're going to be over the ocean. You're going to meet a bidder. And it's like crazy man. He was a bidder and all that kind of thing. So I, I, I felt guilty forever that I left. I used to judge people. So then I had two kids. And then the contorted face in the camp of that woman that was kind of whatever that pain. The first opportunity, because in Israel, the only way to go to medical school was in Jerusalem. There was no way money and all that kind of thing. So when I felt safe against everybody what they wanted, you could not stop me. So I had my PhD open. He helped me. He was a, you know, a marketing guy, a 10 mental health clinic, you know, probation, mm-hmm. domestic violence, respect. Blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, but so and then here, here I am bestseller and I closed the door there. I wanted more time. I didn't want to because I was not fit to be anybody's therapist. I like to travel. I've been all over the world and all that. So there are different <laughs> chapters in our life, girls. Okay? Yes, and yes. Yeah, we have to play. But again, it's not one other. If there's a startup, if there's no failure. Remember, it's there any there's no failure. The startup there, I go every two years. It's crazy, man. So your life is in happening. You're in the process of evolving. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. When you were free. You have to talk louder so okay. they can hear you. So when you were in the transition, when you were free, how difficult was it to get into a real state of, of being free? Does that make sense? Uh, Could you I, guys hear that question? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, I did not have the sense of being free because mm-hmm. coming back, it was taken over our home, our compound was mm-hmm. taken over by the Russians, whatever. I was in a Catholic school, only mm-hmm. Jewish little girl. When I felt free was when I came to Israel. Mm-hmm. I was the majority. And I can tell you, it was 1949. 48 it became a state. 49. How I felt. I mean, who's the man? Uh, they are invincible. Then uh, again, the world is nice. Right. The first time. Can't hear. Can't hear. How old were you? Yeah. We lost you. Hey, Linda, we can't hear you guys. We can't hear you. I don't think she's. I think no. she's involved with her conversation, but we'll wait till she can see us. Maybe. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Mary? I can hear, yes. Yeah, we can hear each other. Linda, we can't hear you. <laughs> we'll just kind of, we we'll just kind of, we'll just sit here until they're done because we have a technical difficulty here, folks. This is what happens on Taco Tuesday. That's right. When we're live. It happened. We'll keep putting our head by our ears. Maybe Linda will see that. Well, I'll get real close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To hear what she's saying. I can't hear. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know what she's saying. Ah. I wonder if I could, like, I'm going to come Linda. up with something. Yeah. Linda. Maybe Cheryl, can you text her? Can Cheryl hear us? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Yeah. Put a time. Uh, if I do it like this, I wonder if it's if I have to. No. All we know is um, people is that whatever she's saying is so intense. We wish that we could hear. It. I know. I want to know what's happening. <laughs> Hold on. It's, I wish like I had Linda's a marker. Having a great time. I imagine she's saying that the world was just amazing to her. And that she was taking it all in can and this, working with it. Every... See this? Yeah. Oh, it's backwards. That's okay. It's backwards. That's okay. Does that work? I can see it. Can she see it? 
No, if I'm going to see if I can even, if I can. Uh... Yeah, we're trying. I know, Alicia, thanks, Alicia. I see your comment. We're trying to let her Hold know. Hold on, I'm going to try. Um, I can't do it in sign language. They are not listening. Hold on. No. I want to respect thank what you. she's saying. But if I can't hear, can the, can Linda, the crowd can't hear, hear you? Linda. Oi. We can't oi. hear I said, you. Oi. Hold on, let me see. I'm going to write backwards. I'm gonna yeah. see if I can do it. Um, let's see. This, this, this is so hilarious. We have no idea what she's saying, but it looks like they're saying. Look, if I can do this, then this is amazing. Um, Thanks, Charmin. We hear, yeah, we can hear us. We just can't hear them. Charmin's commenting on it too. Charmin, how are you? I hope you're enjoying the interview. What you can hear. I just did this backwards. Let's see if I if I did this. Okay. Turn, this turned out right. Wait, yeah. we can't hear you. Well, we're going to keep, we hate to talk over her. She's probably giving <laughs> such great value. All right, I'm going to put it right here. She's looking. We can't hear you. I hope you guys are out of the show, then. Oh, man. We can't hear us. <laughs> The smiley face is right there. <clears throat> well, we're going to... I really hate to talk over people, but we don't know what to do, guys. I don't even know sign language. This is where... I mean, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> that. I know another one, but I don't want to put that on there. That's inappropriate. If you have questions for, for her, go ahead and list the questions below. We'll have her look at them later, so that way she can go ahead and answer questions. Um... What she said. I can't believe silence. I wrote this backwards. That's kind no, of it looks scary. Good. Yeah, it looks good. I'm enjoying it. Too. Bad. I mean, look Charmin. at that. That's pretty good handwriting, folks. Okay, Charmin says she's enjoying us having a great time. Thank you, Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and just assimilate what she's saying. I think she's saying. Oh, we heard that. That her life I don't is want to so disrespect amazing. her. I don't want to disrespect what she's saying. I have no I idea what she's saying. Linda, we can't. I could hear dub you. over it, but that would be horrible. Okay. Linda, we can't hear you. The whole interview, Linda, we can't hear you. Oh, uh, we can't Aww. hear you. Let's see if I can say Thanks, this. Alicia. One. Alicia, you've been wonderful for letting us know, but unfortunately, we lost a great interview. At least I'm using my drawing skills so we can at least pass the time. Look, can't hear you still. We can't hear you still. I put a smiley face on yeah, there. there. Linda, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Linda? Linda? Can you hear me? <laughs> Linda. Uh, turn the volume up on the computer. Maybe that's what the problem is. It just Any went completely silent. I mean, yeah. uh, it's a muffle. I shouldn't say completely silent. Oh, but they can't. Maybe they can't hear us. No, we're gone. Oh, they're gone. Yeah, they could hear. <clears throat> Alicia. Well, everyone else can hear us. Alicia could hear. Alicia, us. Alicia, can you hear us? us? Alicia, can you hear us? Well, I imagine what she was saying is just how impactful her life was, and maybe we can get Linda to do like a video of an interview with her and post it on Talk Road Tuesday Day. I mean, like on the feed. And she can like do a little well, quick video and, and like at least post that because I can't imagine that was so impactful. We missed a really great deal. It was. But you know what's also impactful? What? The smell we were talking about that I had when I was in the oh, yeah. store. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Could I have a real good one too? So finish up before they come back on. <laughs> Hurry up. Tell me it. Tell me it. Okay, 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 okay. So um, I was in college and I started working. I decided to work for this place because these guys looked so good. They were like totally dressed up in uh -huh. the suit. And the thing is, is I got this thing for guys in suits. If a man can wear a suit well, then let me just tell you, that's just fantastic. So I passed by this place and here's these men that are standing around in suits. I'm like, I want to work here. Yeah. So I did. And then <clears throat> every day I ended up working at the, at the store in uh, golf mill mall. Uh -huh. And I, I was the only female there and I oh. always spray this one type of cologne. Paul Sebastian was the name of the cologne. Oh, wow. So every time I smell it, whenever I smell my husband <laughs> bought it so that I could smell it on him. I always oh. had this like really good feeling whenever I smelled that cologne. Oh, that is really the good. end. Cut. All right. Cut. Linda, are you back? Are you back? We're back. I think oh, yay! Are, we, are we back? We're back. <laughs> so that means okay. we can 
hear you. So I change it now. Look, we can hear you. Nice open faces. If you people think I think, oh, no, we can't hear you again. <laughs> in the broadcast, and you're going to talk to our viewers now. Because so we'll let <laughs> All right. Well, we we lost them. All right. I have a real quick story. Are right, we talking about? Yeah, sounds? tell me your story. Wanna... Okay, sounds and smell. Here's a smell, real quick. When sounds I was and in high school, this man, this my girlfriend's dad, told me if I ate mushrooms, I was gonna get big boobs. He told me that. So that smell of baking, uh, mushrooms grilling in the pan. Every time I smell it, I think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get big boobs. Right. So for the longest yeah. time. If I ate mushrooms, I'm going to get big boobs. And every time I smelt it, it would drive me crazy. Well, needless He's to like, say, now I, now I love mushrooms it's and because, whatever, yeah, whatever. Your dad was probably right. <laughs> it wasn't my dad. It was one of my friend's dad. But all I can oh, tell friend's you dad? is that every time I smelt mushrooms cooking, I was like, oh, my gosh, don't eat them. You're going to get big boobs. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Mary. That is so funny. I, 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 I don't I, – I'm trying to think of <clears> – <throat> I'm trying to think of um, – the, the other smell that I know that I enjoy is uh-huh. the smell of the gum, big red, uh-huh. the cinnamon. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that, that smell, the big red smell, you know, the taste oh. of big red and the yeah. smell. Um, but uh, yeah. Do a show on scents. Charmin says, do a show on scents. Yeah. Oh. Here's another one, Charmin. Here's a real, another good one. When the first time you got drunk, remember when your first time you got drunk? That Mary, smell? you are just talking about the most fun things. This would be like a Taco <laughs> Tuesday after dark. <laughs> totally. But you know that smell, that very first thing. Oh my gosh! Right? Oh man, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, You'll never go back gosh. and have that screwdriver again, will you? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I um, now, I, now you're making me think. I think the worst time, the worst experience. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I love Mary too. Uh, the worst experience I can remember uh-huh. was uh, I think I was tw- I, I turned 21, uh-huh. and uh, I went with some friends <laughs> to the North <laughs> Beach. It's a, it's a, it's not literally the beach. It was a place you go in. Yeah. Inside was. Uh, sand volleyball indoors yeah and it's a place you could go and drink and whatnot and and right. uh, all of our friends they had me taking a shot of something that I liked at the time which was ouzo yeah <sighs> so one at a time uh-huh. those, you know shots don't shots hit you later it's not in an instant yeah. feeling at least for me it started to hit me a little bit later but um I I ended up so bad because they every time every time one side got a point they're like drink yay and I'm like okay <laughs> and next thing you know it was just a really bad scene I was not yeah. in a good place and they you know I, I ended up uh, I, I remember that day that I just didn't want to have Uzo for like the longest time <laughs> Alicia, Alicia says mine with a screwdriver broke a toilet throwing up Alicia Alicia so was mine oh my gosh that's what? hilarious mine was a screwdriver true Oh my gosh, that's she hilarious. broke a toilet. I want to bring her on the on the show. <laughs> let's I want to hear about out. this breaking the toilet now, business. Now let's talk about the porcelain good, goddess. Right, right, exactly. Let's talk about a good scent. I love to walk into a house and sell and smell baking banana nut muffins. Mm. I just want to eat them. I the do smell. Them. Yeah. Mm, banana nut isn't there isn't there something isn't there something um about there's a scientific something i know a real uh-huh. estate agent is going to be able if anyone here is a real estate agent uh-huh. then maybe you can chime in and tell me yeah. this or if you already know the psychology of it but when you want to get a house ready to show yeah that they bake cookies or they yeah. bake a certain kind of bread Oh, is that bread. right? I think bread would be a good one. Make it homey. You bake that bread and you come in the house because it just yeah. makes you want to buy the house. Yeah, Some psychology to that. That makes sense. Well, it looks like we lost our, our um, host, Miss Linda. Yeah, this is an adventure because you know what's happening yeah. to you, Mary? No. No, what's <laughs> happening? I see me driving. No, I'm not driving. You're, so you're, <laughs> you're on a delay. You're <laughs> delayed again. I'm on delay again. Oh yes, I don't even know what's happening to me. I don't know <laughs> if I'm on. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I'm probably like some weird filters on. I don't know. But no, you're on a delay. Am I? I'm sorry. Well, so you're I, laughing right now at something that you must have laughed about like five seconds ago, and I, I don't even know why you're laughing. I'm sorry to hear that. That I'm on <laughs> delay. <laughs> Today's Taco Tuesday, everyone. I hope if you're enjoying this show, please give us hearts. Really, well, right, exactly. I beg you. 
what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we probably should go ahead and should we kind of end this up a little bit, I think. So I don't know. Lost. We're at 245 uh, in know, Chicago time. Minutes. I know. 15 minutes. <clears throat> See, let me just take a look at this while we're all here. This is this is the talk show. Yeah. So we can and talk right. about things. All right, you so know what? Maybe. If those of you that are viewing the show right now, uh, uh-huh. I think you should ask questions. Ask us questions so we can try to answer you. Interview us. It'd be kind of fun. But um, it has to be appropriate. Okay. I want to make sure I answer good questions. Um, <clears throat> Oh, where'd you go? It's just me. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. <laughs> this is one of the funniest talk shows I've ever been on so far. I think this is our second one. <laughs> and here I am, Taco Tuesday with Anita Myers. So if you if you have any questions and you want to share it with me, share away. I want to hear about, you know, some of the things that I, oh, it's Linda Sunshine West couldn't connect anymore. I know. Are you watching the show live right now and understanding what's just happening to little old me? Everyone has abandoned me and I have abandonment issues <laughs> out of everything that I could totally conquer in my life. This is an opportunity for me to embrace the abandonment. And I know it wasn't intentional. I know, I know <laughs> that there's love in the abandonment. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Hello, you're back. See, I held on. I held on. I didn't cry. I didn't go in the corner and <laughs> shake and hope. And I just That's knew okay. you're going to come back. And there you are. It was um, weather alerts kept happening on my phone. Is that what? <laughs> do you know, Mary, do you know how funny this is? I'm just going to have a talk with you right now. And if anyone wants to listen, you all just listen in. So I'm sitting here with you, Mary, and we have Linda, and we're listening to this fantastic woman who I can't hear anymore, and then we can't see them anymore, and then I'm talking to you, and then you're gone. Like, I could have had a moment of a breakdown here. This is really serious stuff, but you know what? Because of Dr. Erica's zest for life, I kept thriving. I held on. Right. That happened today, folks. See, That's you could have just had this whole big breakthrough. You could have took over, Wonder Woman did to death, and said, I am Anita. You know, I that was taking over the that airways. Was it was a test of this is backwards, but it says, Be strong and courageous. You got it, woman. I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could. I, I'm not going to write backwards anymore. That felt very <laughs> shining. Comic show of the week. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seriously, Alicia. That is so funny. I'm still thinking about you breaking a toilet. Like, what did you do? <laughs> how, how, who breaks toilets when you're throwing up? How does that happen? What in the world could you have done to break that toilet? We're going to find out. We're going to get right. her on. We're going to get her on. All right. Abigail. Abigail says Dr. Mill is just take, talking to us at Mastermind, ladies. Okay, great. All right. So we are going to go ahead and let them finish up because it looks like she's talking to them at mastermind that's what came up in chat just now so so oh wait 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 something's happening and that's what's happening (laughs) so here's the thing mary this is an opportunity for you and me to just get to know each other better so we're talking about smells and we're talking about you said some things about mushrooms and boobs so we've learned (laughs) a lot about you in there um you (laughs) you You asked. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's what makes it important. Here's the thing. We, you know, this whole show for today was really centered on, you know, learning for some of the, for the guests that we had, she went through the Holocaust and she learned how to thrive, right? Mm-hmm. She didn't just survive. Right. She learned how to thrive yep. and she's thriving because she's alive. So if that's we right. look at where we are in our lives, we are really blessed, you know, in all seriousness, we are absolutely blessed to be living in times in our country, at least. I can't speak for, I'm sure if we took time to look at different parts around the world, there are a lot of people that are suffering. There are a lot of situations that are happening. We are in a place in one of the countries of the world where there is freedom, where we are able to do so many wonderful things that to think about the things that we really get angry about, Mm -hmm. that we hold so much contempt and you see, some of the things that make us so angry and the way that we're handling life and on top of it all, the way our emotional structure is, what our threshold is for getting upset, getting depressed, um, feeling the things that normally folks would feel if they're losing their lives. Right. Maybe it's something to think about today, even if we don't have the opportunity to enjoy the presence of Dr. Erica Miller as we wanted to, Right. It's still an opportunity for us to start thinking about what are the methods that we use to survive 
and really change our mind, our mindset and using the power that we have to truly thrive. Like, what are some of the things for you? Like when you go through the things you go through in your day, how do you get past it? How do you get past it to the point of in a, th- you know, you go from a place where you're feeling frustrated and depressed or unhappy to a place where you're okay with it. And um, you actually have a better day. I visualize. I visualize all the time. You visualize. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> oh boy. Don't tell me mushrooms and boobs right now. Like we already <laughs> did that one. No. All right. There's a big stage and I'm walking out to the stage and there are thousands of young people out there. And I have all these people behind me that we're changing lives. And all I hear is. <sighs> and I'm thinking life changing. Life-changing, 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 life-changing. woo And that's what gets me through the day. So what you're really saying is that... Um, <laughs> There's no real so saying, can, that's what I'm just saying. So I can, yeah, I just want to try to translate that for anyone who doesn't There's understand no, Mary. There's no translation. It's a beautiful it's thing just... that you're envisioning. You're envisioning success. You're envisioning victory. You're envisioning that, you yeah. know, in your arena what you're doing in this world is going to be a life-changing experience for people. You're looking to success, right? I'm looking for everyone I talk to, touch to, whatever it may be, something's going to happen. We are all going to take that next step to success, to enjoyment, to life, to this world. Mm -hmm. So Mary, what would you, what would you like to, like, I'm going to ask you the question I was going to ask Dr. (laughs) Erica Miller. Maybe she could answer this also later on somehow, (laughs) but, um, What would you like to see change in the uh, community and environment that you see around you when it comes to thriving? If you don't see people thriving, what would you like to see change? I'd just like to see everyone know they have a choice to make a choice. They have that choice. They don't have to just take whatever's given to them. It's their choice. Just take it. Do whatever you want. It's your choice to be mad. It's your choice to be happy. It's your choice to accept what it is. It's your choice to be mad at traffic. It's your choice to sit back and go, life goes on. Mm-hmm. It's your mm-hmm. choice. <clears throat> I think about if I have to answer a question like that, that mm-hmm. if I could, if I, you know, what I would like to see with what I do for a living is, you know, the, there's a time to be upset. You know, there's a time to mourn. And sometimes we mourn different types of degrees of losses. So mm-hmm. when, when that happens, our emotions, we have the emotion of anger and frustration and all of those other types of relatable cousins, uh, that's negative and those negative things are there for us to associate with something that makes us feel bad then this is what we feel it makes sense to feel upset and those are normal things even anxiety it's not always a diagnosed Mm -hmm. thing regular everyday standard human beings go through anxiety go through depression go through these things so how do we manage that i think that if we understand that there's a time for it and we give it its time it doesn't necessarily have to be where you're in the middle of work and you get up and you yell at everybody because you're mad. It means there's a time and a place to address it, but it should be addressed. So if you can address right. the things that are negative and look at the situation, get into the arena, like uh, Brene Brown always talks about man in the arena with her Daring mm-hmm. Greatly book. If anyone's ever read that, that's a good book to read. But if you can address the emotion that you have and give it its time, it'll release you. It's there's this, there's this psychological release that takes place. So for instance, you know, you're an athlete, you're an athlete and you're involved with thriving. Well, I'm not, I'm not per se an athlete. I love it. Okay, Mary. You're an athlete. <laughs> Anyways. So there, if I have a ball and I throw the ball to you and you catch it, it seems so rudimentary, no big deal, whatever. But the thing right. is, is when you see a little toddler and you work really hard to take that ball and throw it, you want that kid to catch it. That moment that that person catches it, it's just the best, that little kid, it's the best feeling in the world. And then they throw it back. And then you eventually right. find out that maybe the way that they throw tells you that they could probably be the next baseball player and the next pitcher. Right. But when we, when, we, when we have these types of emotions, we have to give it its place and we have to receive it as well. So that this way, the journey that that emotion takes does have an end. Once that happens, you know that moment I just told you that when the toddler gets yeah. the ball, when that moment happens, it's a release. It's done. It's complete. You finished right. it. So a lot of, to- I think, in my opinion, a lot of folks out there, they have emotions that they haven't finished having. So let's say you stifle your tears for a long, long, long time. 
And all of a sudden here you are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and you're looking at a commercial and suddenly you know, your tears are all coming out of your eyes. And you're wondering what in the world, why am I crying? Well, that could have been from when you were 15 years old when something went wrong or 27 when something else took place. But if you're stifling it, your emotions have a place that they need to go. If they don't get to go where they need to go, illness can come. You have issues that you take care of later on. You have defenses that you deal with. So I think that um, when I look at what I'd like to see going forward, mm -hmm. I'd love to see people finish their emotions find the time and the place to do it, address the things that upset them, the negatives yep. that are bothering them. And then when they finish that, they can actually come to a, a place of clarity and that's right. when they can grow. And well, that's, seeing that in this world would be really nice. And that would be really cool. Now I agree with you hundred percent, but you know me, I don't have any negative emotions, so we won't even go that way, but that I hear. You don't have any negative emotions, Mary. No, life is too short for that. But anyhow, more importantly, it's getting to the end of the show. And we got to remember, we got to talk about what's going on um, next week. Or what are we doing next week? We don't even know. All right. Or next week, we're talking <laughs> about. Oh, yeah. Remember what we're talking about? Broadening the boundaries. Beliefs no longer have to be limited. And um, I, I think that's Linda's information i wonder if we even have that yeah, in yeah here. and that's what Teresa snyder wait till you meet her she's so cool. oh you know Teresa snyder right that's right that's right i get to meet yeah. her this is new for me Teresa is a Very new cool. person i get to meet i'm excited about that so tell me Very about cool. her again who is Teresa snyder what's she about um she it, we only have a minute so i gotta go real quick um talk show host that talks to oh okay we talked to a lot of different people about um limiting beliefs you know not to have learned beliefs and i know her because she works with athletes yeah. Okay. So, so Teresa Snyder talks about limiting beliefs. Does, yes. uh, if anyone doesn't know what a limiting belief is, you know what, you're going to find and out boundaries. next week on taco yeah. Tuesday. You I know it. we've got three minutes left where I'm at. I don't know how you have one minute where you're at, but maybe you're, I thought I saw, so I come up delayed. on the screen one minute. Or, or ahead. Yeah. That's all. Thanks yeah. for joining the show. Thank you for joining us. That was fun. That was an adventure. <laughs> Well, you know what? If you enjoyed this, please give us some feedback. This was such a fun, different. We did not expect this, but this is what you do. You just got to do. Yep. You just got to do. Yep. Um, just def def definitely give us some hearts. Let us know how you think. And if you have any yeah. questions or any suggestions about what you'd like to see in the upcoming weeks, any topics, let us know. Yep. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. It was a blast. It was so much fun. It was a blast. Well, thanks a lot, everyone that was here. We 